A uniform resource identifier is a string of characters that unambiguously identifies a particular resource. To guarantee uniformity, all URIs follow a predefined set of syntax rules, but also maintain extensibility through a separately defined hierarchical naming scheme, e.g., http such identification enables interaction with representations of the resource over a network, typically the World Wide Web, using specific protocols. Schemes specifying a concrete syntax and associated protocols define each URI. The most common form of URI is the Uniform Resource Locator URL, frequently referred to informally as a web address. More rarely seen in usage is the uniform resource name earn, which was designed to complement URLs by providing a mechanism for the identification of resources in particular namespaces. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> URLs and earns. A uniform resource name earn is a URI that identifies a resource by name in a particular namespace. A earn may be used to talk about a resource without implying its location or how to access it. For example, in the International Standard Book Number ISBN system, ISBN 0-486-27557-4 identifies a specific edition of Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. The urn for that edition would be urn, ISBN, 0-486-27557-4. However, it gives no information as to where to find a copy of that book. A uniform resource locator URL is a URI that specifies the means of acting upon or obtaining the representation of a resource, i.e. specifying both its primary access mechanism and network location. For example, the URL http colon slash slash example dot org slash wiki slash main underscore page refers to a resource identified as wiki main underscore page whose representation, in the form of HTML and related code, is obtainable via the hypertext transfer protocol HTTP smiley face from a network host whose domain name is example dot org. A urn may be compared to a person's name, while a URL may be compared to their street address. In other words, a urn identifies an item and a URL provides a method for finding it. Technical publications, especially standards produced by the IETF and by the W3C, normally reflect a view outlined in a W3C recommendation of 2001, which acknowledges the precedence of the term URI rather than endorsing any formal subdivision into URL and earn. As such, a URL is simply a URI that happens to point to a resource over a network. However, in non-technical contexts and in software for the World Wide Web, the term URL remains widely used. Additionally, the term web address, which has no formal definition, often occurs in non-technical publications as a synonym for a URI that uses the HTTP or HTTPS schemes. Such assumptions can lead to confusion, for example, in the case of XML namespaces that have a visual similarity to resolvable URIs. Specifications produced by the WHATWG prefer URL over URI, and so newer HTML5 APIs use URL over URI. While most URI schemes were originally designed to be used with a particular protocol, and often have the same name, they are semantically different from protocols. For example, the scheme HTTP is generally used for interacting with web resources using HTTP, but the scheme file has no protocol. <laughs> Generic syntax. Topic Definition 
Each URI begins with a scheme name that refers to a specification for assigning identifiers within that scheme. As such, the URI syntax is a federated and extensible naming system wherein each scheme's specification may further restrict the syntax and semantics of identifiers using that scheme. The URI generic syntax is a superset of the syntax of all URI schemes. It was first defined in Request for Comments RFC 2396, published in August 1998, and finalized in RFC 3986, published in January 2005. The URI generic syntax consists of a hierarchical sequence of five components. URI equals scheme, authority, path, query, hashtag fragment. Where the authority component divides into three subcomponents. Authority equals user info at host, port. This is represented in a syntax diagram as the URI comprises a non-empty scheme component followed by a colon smiley face, consisting of a sequence of characters beginning with a letter and followed by any combination of letters, digits, plus, plus, period, or hyphen. Although schemes are case insensitive, the canonical form is lowercase and documents that specify schemes must do so with lowercase letters. Examples of popular schemes include HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, MailTo, File, Data, and IRC. URI schemes should be registered with the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority IANA, although non-registered schemes are used in practice. An optional authority component preceded by two slashes, comprising an optional user info subcomponent that may consist of a user name and an optional password preceded by a colon smiley face, followed by an at symbol at. Use of the format username, password in the user info subcomponent is deprecated for security reasons. Applications should not render as clear text any data after the first colon smiley face, found within a user info subcomponent unless the data after the colon is the empty string indicating no password. An optional host subcomponent, consisting of either a registered name including but not limited to a host name, or an IP address. IPv4 addresses must be in dot decimal notation, and IPv6 addresses must be enclosed in brackets. An optional port subcomponent preceded by a colon smiley face. A path component, consisting of a sequence of path segments separated by a slash. A path is always defined for a URI, though the defined path may be empty zero length. A segment may also be empty, resulting in two consecutive slashes, in the path component. A path component may resemble or map exactly to a file system path, but does not always imply a relation to one. If an authority component is present, then the path component must either be empty or begin with a slash. If an authority component is absent, then the path cannot begin with an empty segment, that is with two slashes, as the following characters would be interpreted as an authority component. The final segment of the path may be referred to as a slug, an optional query component preceded by a question mark, containing a query string of non-hierarchical data. Its syntax is not well defined, but by convention is most often a sequence of attribute value pairs separated by a delimiter. An optional fragment component preceded by a hash, hash. The fragment contains a fragment identifier providing direction to a secondary resource, such as a section heading in an article identified by the remainder of the URI. When the primary resource is an HTML document, the fragment is often an id attribute of a specific element, and web browsers will scroll this element into view. Strings of data octets within a URI are represented as characters. 
permitted characters within a URI are the ASCII characters for the lowercase and uppercase letters of the modern English alphabet, the Arabic numerals, hyphen, period, underscore, and tilde. Octets represented by any other character must be percent encoded. Of the ASCII character set, the characters Hash at are reserved for use as delimiters of the generic URI components and must be percent encoded. For example, percent %3f for a question mark. The characters dollar and asterisk plus equals are permitted by generic URI syntax to be used unencoded in the user information, host, and path as delimiters. Additionally, and it may appear unencoded within the path, query, and fragment, and, and, may appear unencoded as data within the query or fragment. Equals. Topic examples equals The following figure displays example URIs and their component parts, user info host port https colon slash slash john dot do at www.example.com port one two three slash forum slash questions slash question mark tag equals networking and order equals newest hash top scheme authority path query fragment LDAP colon slash slash two oh oh one DB eight 7, C equals GB, object class, 1 scheme authority path query mail to, john.do at example.com scheme path news, comp.infosystems.www.servers.unix scheme path telephone, plus 1 816 555 1212 scheme path telnet colon slash slash 192.0.2.16 port 80 slash scheme authority Path Earn, Oasis, Names, Specification, DocBook, DTD, XML, 4.1. 2. Scheme Path. Topic: URI References. Topic: Definition. A URI reference is either a URI, or a relative reference when it does not begin with a scheme component followed by a colon smiley face. A path segment that contains a colon character e foo, bar, cannot be used as the first path segment of a relative reference if its path component does not begin with a slash, as it would be mistaken for a scheme component. Such a path segment must be preceded by a dot path segment e.g., foo, bar. Web document markup languages frequently use URI references to point to other resources, such as external documents or specific portions of the same logical document. In HTML, the value of the SRC attribute of the IMG element provides a URI reference, as does the value of the href attribute of the or or link element. In XML, the system identifier appearing after the system keyword in a DTD is a fragmentless URI reference. In XSLT, the value of the href attribute of the XSL, import element, instruction is a URI reference, likewise the first argument to the document function. Examples. <laughs> <laughs> https colon slash slash example dot com slash path slash resource dot txt hash fragment slash slash example dot com slash path slash resource dot txt slash path slash resource dot txt path slash resource dot txt slash path slash resource dot txt slash resource dot txt slash resource dot txt resource text hashtag fragment topic URI resolution topic definition 
An absolute URI is a URI with no fragment component. Resolving a URI reference against a base URI results in a target URI. This implies that the base URI exists and is an absolute URI. The base URI can be obtained, in order of precedence, from the reference URI itself if it is a URI, the content of the representation, the entity encapsulating the representation, the URI used for the actual retrieval of the representation, the context of the application. Topic Examples Within a representation with a well defined base URI of http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash d semicolon p question mark q A relative reference is resolved to its target URI as follows G H two G H G two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g per gram two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g g two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g slash Per gram two http colon slash slash a slash g per gram two http colon slash slash g y two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash d semicolon p question mark y g y 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g question mark y hash s 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash d semicolon p question mark q hash s g hash s 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g hash s g y hash s 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g question mark y hash s x 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash semicolon x g x 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g semicolon x g x y hash s 2 http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash g semicolon x question mark y hash s quote quote two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash d semicolon p question mark q quote dot quote two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash quote dot slash quote two http colon slash slash a slash b slash c slash quote dot dot quote two http colon slash slash a slash b slash Quote dot dot slash quote two http colon slash slash a slash b slash per gram two http colon slash slash a slash b slash g quote dot dot slash dot dot quote two http colon slash slash a slash Quote dot dot slash dot dot slash quote two 
http colon slash slash a slash per gram two http colon slash slash a slash g topic history topic Naming, addressing, and identifying resources URIs and URLs have a shared history. In 1994, Tim Berners-Lee's proposals for hypertext implicitly introduced the idea of a URL as a short string representing a resource that is the target of a hyperlink. At the time, people referred to it as a hypertext name or document name. Over the next three and a half years, as the World Wide Web's core technologies of HTML, HTTP, and web browsers developed, a need to distinguish a string that provided an address for a resource from a string that merely named a resource emerged. Although not yet formally defined, the term uniform resource locator came to represent the former, and the more contentious uniform resource name came to represent the latter. During the debate over defining URLs and urns it became evident that the two concepts embodied by the terms were merely aspects of the fundamental, overarching notion of resource identification. In June 1994, the IETF published Berners-Lee's RFC 1630, the first request for comments that acknowledged the existence of URLs and urns, and, more importantly, defined a formal syntax for universal resource identifiers—URL-like strings whose precise syntaxes and semantics depended on the schemes. In addition, this RFC attempted to summarize the syntaxes of URL schemes in use at the time. It also acknowledged, but did not standardize, the existence of relative URLs and fragment identifiers. <laughs> Refinement of specifications In December 1994, RFC 1738 formally defined relative and absolute URLs, refined the general URL syntax, defined how to resolve relative URLs to absolute form, and better enumerated the URL schemes then in use. The agreed definition and syntax of urns had to wait until the publication of RFC 2141 in May 1997. The publication of RFC 2396 in August 1998 saw the URI syntax become a separate specification and most of the parts of RFCs 1630 and 1738 relating to URIs and URLs in general were revised and expanded by the IETF. The new RFC changed the meaning of U in URI to Uniform from Universal. In December 1999, RFC 2732 provided a minor update to RFC 2396, allowing URIs to accommodate IPv6 addresses. A number of shortcomings discovered in the two specifications led to a community effort, coordinated by RFC 2396 co-author Roy Fielding, that culminated in the publication of RFC 3986 in January 2005. While obsoleting the prior standard, it did not render the details of existing URL schemes obsolete. RFC 1738 continues to govern such schemes except where otherwise superseded. RFC 2616, for example, refines the HTTP scheme. Simultaneously, the IETF published the content of RFC 3986 as the full standard STD-66, reflecting the establishment of the URI generic syntax as an official Internet protocol. 
In 2001, the W3C's Technical Architecture Group TAG published a guide to best practices and canonical URIs for publishing multiple versions of a given resource. For example, content might differ by language or by size to adjust for capacity or settings of the device used to access that content. In August 2002, RFC 3305 pointed out that the term URL had, despite widespread public use, faded into near obsolescence, and serves only as a reminder that some URIs act as addresses by having schemes implying network accessibility, regardless of any such actual use. As URI-based standards such as Resource Description Framework make evident, resource identification need not suggest the retrieval of resource representations over the Internet, nor need they imply network-based resources at all. The Semantic Web uses the HTTP URI scheme to identify both documents and concepts in the real world, a distinction which has caused confusion as to how to distinguish the two. The TAG published an email in 2005 on how to solve the problem, which became known as the HTTP RANGE 14 resolution. The W3C subsequently published an interest group note titled Cool URIs for the Semantic Web, which explained the use of content negotiation and the HTTP 303 response code for redirections in more detail. Topic. Relation to XML namespaces In XML, a namespace is an abstract domain to which a collection of element and attribute names can be assigned. The namespace name is a character string which must adhere to the generic URI syntax. However, the name is generally not considered to be a URI, because the URI specification bases the decision not only on lexical components, but also on their intended use. A namespace name does not necessarily imply any of the semantics of URI schemes, for example, a namespace name beginning with HTTP, may have no connotation to the use of the HTTP. Originally, the namespace name could match the syntax of any non-empty URI reference, but the use of relative URI references was deprecated by the W3C. A separate W3C specification for namespaces in XML 1.1 permits internationalized resource identifier references to serve as the basis for namespace names in addition to URI references. Topic. See also Curie – defines a generic, abbreviated syntax for expressing URIs Dereferenceable Uniform Resource Identifier – a resource retrieval mechanism that uses any of the Internet protocols e.g. HTTP to obtain a copy or representation of the resource it identifies Extensible Resource Identifier, a scheme and resolution protocol for abstract identifiers compatible with URIs Internationalized Resource Identifier a generalization of URIs allowing the use of Unicode Persistent Uniform Resource Locator Perl, a URI that is used to redirect to the location of the requested web resource Uniform Naming Convention, a common syntax used by Microsoft to describe the location of a network resource, such as a shared file, directory, or printer. Resource Directory Description Language, a descriptive language to provide machine and human readable information about a particular namespace and about the XML documents that use it. UUID Notes <laughs>